Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to work on the final details in this painting. I'm going to share a lot of information during the painting process, like when do we know that the painting is finished? Is there such a thing as a finished painting? All this and more during the painting session. So let's jump in. So, I have here titanium white, cadmium red, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, and cadmium yellow. I will be using and mixing all these colors. Here I have linseed oil. So, let's begin. I'm gonna be working, going back to the pickles. I want to refine some things here in this painting. So I want to mix a very beautiful orangey greenish color. Let's see. I'm taking a little ultramarine blue with ochre yellow and I'm going to break this a little bit with burnt sienna to make it warmer so I want to check this now let's see here for example yes good work in this area mm, maybe a little bit more I want it to be stronger, so I'm taking now cadmium yellow and burnt sienna. I want to see the darkness now. It's too dark, it's too light, so I want to make it a little bit darker with burnt umber, a little bit more of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Let's see, I want it to be a little bit green although here you can see that we have like orangey you see it's like orange so let's do this Take, putting like this a little bit more stronger orange so i'm taking cadmium red cadmium yellow let's check it out yeah exactly so you see, I, I want this painting to be loose. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want it to be hyper-realistic and boring. From the beginning, I wanted this painting, I decided to make it loose, very free-spirited. Like the brush strokes, I want it to be free. So let's see, I'm using a bristle brush. Now I can see that there are areas in the painting that you can see more green, so I need more yellow. Let's see here, for example. Now I want to... I don't want uh, sharp lines. I don't want any sharp lines. I want everything to be blurred so let's see let's <clears throat> I want to put this green here like this Maybe the stronger green that I can see in this painting is up on the left, so it's very bright. Of course, it's all relative. 
it looks very light compared with the rest of the painting. So like this, beautiful. Here a little bit of this, it's very, very bright. I love this. Now, I want to, this area I can see here that we have brightness, but it's, I don't want it to be very strong because it's the far side of the jar. So I will make it bluish, like this, more blue. This will give it like effect of atmospheric distance. Of course I will I will make it darker. Let's see. I want to go back here because I can see that it's lighter, so let's do it with more blue. This area here. then it becomes even brighter on this side here and yellow, more yellow more yellow let's see here it's all in liquid so I I'm, all, I'm thinking about this all the time that it's all inside liquid, inside the brine. So I want it to be very subtle, very soft. Here I can see. Even more. It's wrinkles in the peppers. And I can see this here. Here it's it's very brown, brownish, orangey. So I, I'm mixing what I can see. I see something, so I'm making the color. I I don't I don't like to pre-mix colors. I like to do it here. I can see here that there is some kind of blur, it's all blur. So, I'm taking a little bit of burnt umber. A little bit of blue, not too much. Because the blue is very strong, it can change everything. So I'm taking a little bit, I want it to be shadowy. Here, you see, here. This area here goes up. It's like muddy. You see, you can see this in the photo. It's very muddy. It's even greenish here. So I will make dark green, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, a little bit of yellow ochre because it's it's less than <coughs> it's less than the cadmium it's softer it's weaker so yes i like this more blue exactly You see how I don't want the line to be clear, so now I go back, put the shape of the pepper, look, like this, goes like here, it's bright here, 
like this. I want it to be even darker down in the base of the jar. So doing this here. Once again, Now I'm looking one more time at this area here. So we can see a darkness a little bit, but it's warm. I want to try like this. And it's not sharp, it's very Southern. I want to go back, take some linseed oil. I always like when I feel a little bit lost in the painting, I like to go back to the dark areas. This will help me evolve from there. I don't want, I want to erase this garlic that I see inside. I want it to be dark one, once again. This will help me a lot. And the other side, I want it to be cooler because it's not further from the light source. So here I want it to be cooler, more blue. This here going back and here you can see this, this shape. It's like painting and drawing at the same time. It's I look at the photo, translate it to colors, and if I see a place in the painting that I can go back and retouch, why not? We are here. So, yes, I love this here. So now I covered this area. Now I can see something interesting. I can see here some kind of gray. So I'm going to take red, blue with red, more blue, some kind of purple, put a little bit of white. So now you, we can see the purple. Now I'm going to break it with yellow ochre. It will make a very beautiful gray that I use a lot in my paintings. And now a little bit of cadmium, yellow and more blue because I can see that it's very bluish. And I Go to this place here. And go back to this mess. I can use it. Nice. Now I want to mix once again green.
or <clears throat> a little bit of burnt sienna like this come back to this place here and here this will make the painting much more interesting when there are many <clears throat> many kinds of hues and colors it's not monochromatic it's it will make the painting much richer and much much more interesting like this I can see even pure some kind of pure yellow here so I'm adding this now this place even I can see very strong yellow here here like yellow green I will add this here I can see here it's warm so why not I can use the same mix here like a little bit of manipulation you can see I can make it warmer a little bit darker with burnt umber and go back here like this exactly and the same you can see it here photo I can see that we have even more some kind of reflection here you can see soft line of light here we have more color I can see this so I come here it's very dark and the hidden green I can see it here you can see here it's darker here Now, I want to concentrate this. This will give the painting feeling, uh, illusion. It will give it illusion of details the wrinkles you see it's so little bit goes a long way little bit
if I see a place that I think that I overdone, so I can always go back and correct it, like here. I can see that I exaggerated here. It's much brighter than I saw before. So I come back, put more color, make it brighter here. Can I, I can see a reflection like a line. Nice. Now I can make it a little bit here. It's a little bit darker. I want this area to be a little bit more vivid. So I'm using cadmium red with a little bit of yellow ochre little bit of burnt umber going back here this will give it more body you can see it's warm here so mixing the same pushing it this warm color now I want to go back here. I want to concentrate here to put more details. Let's see what I see. I can already this area here. I can work this, put more details, refining this area. It's much brighter. So I'm using white little bit of ultramarine blue like this. Now I'm using the quinacrid <coughs> on magenta with a little bit of yellow ochre to take it one step down. I don't want it to be too strong. Let's check this U. A mm. little bit more blue, more burnt umber. Let's see. Mm. Even a little bit more blue, more red. and more white. Let's see this now. Yeah. That's good. I want to cover this like this. And make it brighter a little bit here. This will add to the effect of the 3D, three dimension. Now when I go back and push it more stronger here, now I'm going to use a smaller brush. This will give me more control because I can see that this area is very small. So like this, a little bit of red. I'm using a round synthetic now because we already have the layer with enough details. So now I can use the synthetic. This will help me control and put 
finer details in this painting. Let's see. Yes. This. Purple. Tracing this line, correcting some. I can use this here for the highlight. It's not, it's not pure white. It's, you can see that it's has yellow a little bit now we have here same it's very strong here the white it's a highlight and here I can even make this more contrastic. More white. Now I want to go back here. I want this place, this area to be dark. Here I can see it. I don't need to to trace every detail. I only need to suggest making suggestions. You see, look here. Making effect it will look like glass and it's messy when it's like this you see like there are some etchings on the glass here here I can see orangey here. You can see this in the photo. So I'm going back here. You can see that I, I don't like to mix clean colors. I like it to be messy. Yes, this is it. see here like dirty yellowish now I can see a very strong highlight it's pure white I can see it here I'm like here
and here. And inside of the jar, I can see orangey, burnt sienna, white, here. very strong. And we have here you see I'm working on the reflections, on the highlights, fine details. All these small things add up. This will make the painting look richer. Now <clears throat> I can see something that is bothering my eye. Look, this metal thing here, I want to go back, make it dark. Then I can come and put these highlights on this metal here. It's violet, these lights. Then it <coughs> I can see the highlights. We can see it in this connection here. And here, even here. I will use this, I will mix more and go back to this area here, fix it.
it's it becomes darker now and more bluish here this area here Now I'm taking burnt umber, going back here because I can see some places. The direction of light, of course. Here too, more white. Then it's more subtle. And here I can see one more highlight here. then it becomes cooler going down this will give the feeling of detail now here I want it to be vivid blue cadmium red ultramarine blue like this very strong a little bit of burnt sienna this is the color that I see here now in this metal exactly and here even more to correct something that I can see with my eyes this area here then it's <clears throat> can see a stronger green but it's I can see magenta in this green so I'm putting yellow ochre and going back to blue let's try this yeah exactly now I'm using this here, lighter. There are places here that I can see. And here, even lighter. And here, and here. then I can see darkness in between so I go back here to put it's very dark here I can see it then it goes here under the reflection and here I can see a little bit of this 
this is giving shapes to the leaves that I, when I made these pickles, I used, I don't know how you call this in, <clears throat> how it's called in English, but some kind of leaves that we in the Palestinian cuisine we put them above the pickles Lighter, I can see this place pops up. Yeah, and here. You can see this dark here. Now I'm going to put these garlic. See a highlight here and here. Warm, <coughs> warm color here and here I can see it behind it's darker here this highlight so I'm putting more blue coming here and here and we can see it here It's almost pure blue. And here, connection. Then I can make it lighter. Here I can see 
dark. Then I go back, put this violet, even a lighter violet. The illusion we are making, and now the very, very clean highlight here. And and here, and maybe more here. Why not? But not here. Here I can see it's more. Orangey, like this. So we can already see it looks more detailed, refined. Going back, I'm, I can see something here. And this <coughs> rubber band. It's more blue. Violet blue. Okay. I can correct this. Now, this here, the connection. What else? I can see more. Stronger green here, it's important. going with the wave, with the form of the pepper. Now, I want to introduce <coughs> the garlic. It's very, you see, look here. Then, first I want to put the first layer very dirty, I don't want it to be clear. <clears throat> then I will go back and make it this is further away so I'm making it darker and dirtier. And you can see this one here. Another one, greenish, hiding here. And this 
this one here. Big one. Then it becomes more orangey. You can see it because it's closer to the light. Here it's <clears throat> even red, you can see it. Not, not too much, I don't want to dive into too much detail. Only suggest <clears throat> suggestions. Now, maybe here, I want this dark here to be more interesting, so I'm putting as if there is something hidden beneath. Here too I can use this. Nice. What else? Here. You can see that it's much brighter than I thought. Mm -hmm. Now I want to work this. I want to make make it better. Let's take this blue, magenta, yellow, white, more blue, make it more interesting. A little bit of burnt umber, more. Yellow ochre, uh, yellow cadmium ochre. Yeah, more blue, more burnt umber. Nice, more white. Let's see. Yeah.
I can see more light here as a reflection from the from the glass and it's blue white acrid and magenta and breaking it a little bit of yellow it comes starts here like this nice even <clears throat> more light here this will give it a much stronger effect of transparency the light coming a little bit of light coming through the glass same time doing some correction to the shape even <clears throat> more light a little bit here So, let's see, I want to use the smaller brush here to make this shadow that I can see coming from behind, it's different here. This connection here is darker. A little bit darker, not too. Yeah, and softer. The connection is soft. I want to go back here and make it much stronger, you see, this area. I want it to be purple, bombastic. This will give the painting this loose feeling that I talked about. Make it more modern, more vivid. So now, the question, the main <clears throat> two questions that we need to think about. Is it finished? So, 
I ask myself two questions every time that I'm thinking about finishing and leaving a painting. So two questions and you should ask yourself this question always. If I keep painting, if I keep working on the painting, will it add anything to the value? This is the first question. If I keep working on the painting, will this add to the value of the, of the artwork? The second question is, if I leave it now, is it good enough? I feel, do I feel it's okay to leave it? I did enough. The painting have enough details, enough. Is it interesting enough? So, I still can't say that now. Why? Because there are things unfinished. like here I still want to I don't like the the background I think I will go back and do put some more details more brushwork in the background I don't like it like this. But these are the two questions that you should always be asking yourself. If I leave the painting now, is it good enough? Is it... If I keep working, keep working, you know that ma even masterpieces, the biggest artist, artist that ever existed, ever lived, I do believe that even they could keep working on a painting for months and years more with millions more <coughs> brushwork and but they decide there is a moment that they decide that it's enough it's good enough it's it's alive it's very important not to overdo. When you overdo a painting, it can fail. If you don't do enough, it can fail. So there's a very, very narrow and very, a very narrow line between undone, not enough, and overdone. So you need to be careful. Okay, I want to make a very beautiful orange here. I can see this light here. And here a little bit. Here. Now, I can see this beautiful highlight here. I want to blur a little bit. You see? 
coffee. Get the mouth. Come back. But there is something. It's blue. A little bit. Now, as I said, I want the background to be, let's say, I'm mixing the white with red. Let's take this yellow. using this white that I have warming warmer let's see yeah some more medium linseed not too much because I do want the brushwork to be visible Take this mix. Let's see. Yeah, better. background to be more vivid more even even with a magenta you know it can be beautiful magenta with yellow ochre with cadmium yellow more magenta why not The opposite of green, the opposite of green is red. So I'm making something reddish. Yeah. You see, it's very fast, very. pushing the color I don't want to go all the way up because I want a different a little bit darker here because it's further away and I want it to be much brighter closer to us now I'm not l even looking at the photo I'm inventing and that's the beauty the artistic freedom you can do whatever you want 
you understand the colors, you, you know what works with what. You can do anything you want. Here, for example, this is this connection here. A little bit of blue. I want it to be different. Yeah, a little bit lighter, you see. This area is closer to us, so I want it to be a little bit brighter. And I want this bright color to reach this area, the third. And we'll mix a little bit of this <coughs> same color here. Now I'll use a smaller brush to here and to keep the lines correct I will use a smaller brush of the <clears throat> of the painting so you see I almost used everything on the palette I didn't waste colors <laughs> so a little bit of burnt umber let's take all this mess mess mix it here yeah exactly Coming from darkness to light. start to sweat it's a good sign now I want to use this brush just to go it's smaller brush it's synthetic just to keep the lines
and I want to <clears throat> I want to blur this line a little bit because this shade is further away. A little bit, not too much. Now, here. Now taking from this, putting my finger on the corner because it's a small canvas. See how easy to trace to to stay out of the borders. Take a little bit more from here. And this will make the painting jump even more, more contrast. Sorry for not talking, because I'm so concentrated. I'm not even breathing, because <laughs> I don't want my hand to, to shake. But it's natural, it's, it's okay. I hope you are enjoying, or watching, concentrating. Take a little bit here. So, I think I'm happy with the result. Maybe I will go back here a little. Just so 
some places I see that I don't like the brush stroke, so I not every place like here, here. I can see that I forgot here. I'm taking from here and placing here. This will help the painting <coughs> look more unite. One more thing that I want to do. I need more white. I will put the white here. A little bit, not too much. And I want to take pure white. little bit of texture <clears throat> and I want it to be a bright place here I want it bright where the jar touches <clears throat> touches the table nice Now, I want to sign. very soft i don't want the signature to be too too strong i don't want it to take the focus of the painting so you see like etch doing etching in the color that's it so that's it for this episode i hope you found it interesting and remember that the main two questions that you have to ask yourself is when when you ask yourself when a painting is finished ask yourself 
if I keep painting, keep working on the painting, will it add anything to its value? The second question is if I stop now, if I stop working on the painting now, am I happy? Is it good enough for me? This is very important, these two questions. So, if you liked this video and found it interesting, please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, ask me anything, I will answer you in the comments. Thank you so much and see you next time.